Quick disclaimer on this one, probably don't try to follow along live on the first pass through, maybe watch it and then go back to particular parts because as I'm going through this process, I run into a few places where Ambernick has just done some strange things, which took me a second to sort of be like, oh, I could have done this or oh, this was a little bit weird. You'll see what I mean as we go through it. So I just posted my full review for the RG35XXSP, I was playing some Super Mario 64 earlier. In this video, we're going to attempt to install a firmware update for this device, which as you can see here, does do a, at least a few things. LR key to switch between songs when you're using the Co. The cover does not sleep when closing the cover if you're displaying out over HDMI. So basically, if you plug this thing into your TV, you'll be able to close it and it will continue functioning. You have to leave it open. And then there are some bug fixes. I guess I'll tell you what this actually says. Closing the cover of the music player. The first thing we need to do is download it. I thought it was a download button. It looks like it is literally just a link. I don't know why they can't host their firmware files, but they don't. So we'll just uh, download it from here. So it looks like what we're downloading is a zip file that is approximately 46 gigabytes. And what that says to me is that it will probably have a whole bunch of ROMs on there as well. Basically, what we're going to be doing is popping out the SD card from, you know, the primary slot. And when we install this update, it's not like an update of like a normal operating system where it just installs an update. What's going to happen is your SD card is going to get wiped and it's going to be replaced with something that's going to be akin to how you probably received it with all these ROMs in particular places. And so because of that, what you're going to need to do is shut down your device pop out that SD card and we're going to back up any saves that we want to keep on there. If you go all the way over to settings, you can go to the very bottom where it says shut down and that's what we're going to want to do. At that point, we're going to plug this SD card into our computer. We should have a removable SD card right there. That's going to be the one. And it looks like our saves are all sort of right here. So there's a folder that just says save. It's empty. I have played some Nintendo DS games and there's a folder for that. And then there's saves for RetroArch, and then there's states for RetroArch. So uh, since this one's empty, I'm going to ignore it, but I should be able to just grab these, copy them, and I'm just going to paste them in my downloads folder so that I know where they are. If we go into the actual ROMs, like let's go into GBA. I don't think that any of the saves are in here. No, I think we're good. I think that's where all of those are. So that's good. That makes things nice and easy. So obviously I didn't mention this, but I'll have a link to that firmware in the description. Another link is going to go to Rufus, which is how you're going to be flashing this. So go ahead and come down here. We're just going to download the standard model of Rufus. Back over here on the screen, we can run Rufus and we should see our SD card there. Just make sure it's the correct one. You got your letter. You've got your letter. Match those things up. And once this is done downloading, you're just going to select it. We'll pause here and pick back up in a second. I should also mention that if you have grabbed any ROMs that it didn't come with and you've put those onto your SD card, you're going to want to back those up as well if you haven't done that already because when this flashes, everything is going away. So back up anything you don't want to lose. All right, so we're done downloading and I actually did skip over one important thing. You can't just select the disk image because we're in a zip file. So right click on that and you probably have some way to unzip this already, whether it's WinRAR or 7-zip. But you also have the extract all option, which is built in to Windows. So we're going to extract this here quickly, or maybe not quickly, because I'm doing some other file moving tasks. So we'll pause for just a moment. All right, so things are getting progressively stranger. I extracted this and I expected to see a disk image, but instead inside this folder is another folder. And then what we have here, I thought these were the same thing, but they're not. English 16 gigabyte, English 64 gigabyte. So I guess they've given you two different uh, SD card sizes. We have a 64 gig card. Inside this is a series of split files, which are going to require 7-zip to download. So we're going to come back over to the browser. I'll put another link in the description. You're going to go ahead and download that and get that installed as well. At that point, we're going to open up 7-zip. We're going to navigate to the appropriate folder. This is very strange. We're going to select all of these, though, and we're going to extract, and that should be fine. So basically what I think they've done is, for some reason, they've split the disk image into 14 pieces, and hopefully when we extract them all together, it will mend them all into the disk image. 
So we now have this new folder, and inside of it is an image file, which is fine. I was, you know, .iso.img, that's on that. I want to know what is this? So we're going to go ahead and just extract that here as well. You could have used the extract all function, and it looks like it's another disk image. Is it the same thing? We'll let this do what it's going to do, and I'm going to compare sizes. Maybe they've, Maybe it's the exact same thing, and they've put it in here twice, and they've compressed it with 7-zip and with a just regular zip in case you don't have 7-zip. Maybe it's just like obsolescence, I guess. Redundancy is the correct word. We'll find out here in a second. Yeah, so these look like they're exactly the same. This is the one that just came out of the zip file, and then this is the one that came out of the 7-zip thing. The They're the exact same size. They have the exact same name. So they're just on there twice. I don't know why they've done it this way, but that's the way that they've done it. So you have two different ways. Let's go ahead and grab this thing, 64 gigabyte. And we're just going to grab the one that came out of the zip file. And we should now just be able to click start. And yes, it's going to wipe everything off of your SD card. Yes, it's going to wipe your partitions. And it should be off and running at this point. Probably going to take a decent amount of time. But once it's done... It'll be pretty easy for you to just copy those folders right back in where they were, put your ROMs right back where they were, pop the thing into your console and boot up and be up and running. I'm going to skip ahead until all that's done and then I'll show you. All right, we're booted up and it looks like my save is still intact. Everything is just like I left it. I think I actually had a couple more stars this morning, but I forgot to save it. Remember, you can always do menu and... R1 to save state and then menu at L1 to load that state. So don't do what I did and lose progress. But yeah, as you can see, everything seems to be working just fine. And of course we need to test that video out functionality. So obviously it's working, but what we need to test is if I close it, does it shut off? No, it does not, which means that you can pair a Bluetooth controller to this and just set it out, plug it in to be charging and use it as a little console. How cool is that? So there you go, guys. That took quite a while to actually finish. It won't look that bad from your perspective, but trust me, when you do it, you'll see. But that is the current procedure on how to update your Ambernic RG35XXSP. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Drop a comment down below as well. What do you think about this device in general? I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.